history begins in a hospital room where a boy is flirting with a girl, but the girl tells the boy to stop because someone can come in. The boy tells the girl not to be afraid because he asked his guard Wang Kao to watch outside, so no one will come in. The girl asks the boy what will happen if the patient Yi Chen lying near them will wake up, to which the boy replies Yi Chen is a crippled loser and he can't do much even if he wakes up. The boy tells the girl that Yi Chen was aware of them long before and even if Yi Chen dared to hit him today, he would have murdered Yi Chen in front of her. Meanwhile, when the thunderlight strikes, Yi Chen suddenly wakes up and immediately recognizes the girl Liu Yuxi and the boy Yuan Hao. Yi Chen realizes he has returned to his previous life, and he has been in Jiangnan City for the first time today. Yi Chen remembered today was the day when he found out that his girlfriend Liu Yuxi was sleeping with Yuan Hao. When he begged them, he was pushed down by Yuan Hao and hit by a truck full of dirt in the middle of the road. Despite his survival, he ended up with a lifelong disability, and when his father went to the Yuan family to seek justice for him, the Yuan family beat him to death. After hearing the news, Yi Chen also died away from despair. However, the heavens didn't abandon him. His soul crossed over to the immortal world and experienced 3,000 years of cultivation. When Yi Chen reached the realm of Mahayana, he dominated the world and the Eight Realms and was honored by countless people as the immortal emperor of Xuanchen, but his humiliating past and his father's tragic death were the things that he could not let go of. Yi Chen's body ended up dying as a result of his failure to overcome the tribulation, and he never thought he would be back to that day again. Back to the present, since Yi Chen's legs are crippled and he is awake, Yuan Hao says he wants to play Yi Chen's girlfriend in front of him. Yuan Hao wants to show him the consequences of hitting him, but Yi Chen knows he has the Tai Xuan Sutra in his head, the top cultivation in the world of cultivating immortals and curing crippled legs, simply only one idea. The Tai Xuan Sutra leads the true Kai into the body and circulates around the sky, which allows him to reach the first level of Kai refinement in a single moment. Yi Chen knows bone cleansing is like a new beginning, and he doesn't care if he has a disability in both legs. Suddenly, Yi Chen gets up on his feet using Tai Xuan Sutra, and Yuan Hai and Liu Yuxi are shocked to see what is happening. Liu thinks Yi Chen and the doctor must have planned to deceive her in order to gain her sympathy, but suddenly, Yi Chen slaps her down and asks if she has any pity for his crippled legs. Yuan Hao furiously tries to punch Yi Chen, but Yi Chen dodges it and asks if Yuan Hao really wants to make a move on him. Yi Chen gives him a decisive blow in his stomach, so Yuan Hao calls Wang Kao to come in and orders him to get Yi Chen to death. Meanwhile, Liu Yuxi says she can't have any scars on her face, so she tells Yuan Hao to take her to the greatest cosmetic hospital. Wang Kao says he'll make Yi Chen's life miserable, but suddenly, Yi Chen knocks him down and says no one has ever won against him. After some while, when Yi Chen leaves the hospital, he thinks that he is the immortal emperor of Xuanchen, and in this world, no one can offend him or bully him. Yi Chen has made up his mind that he'll make Yuan Hao and Liu Yuxi pay their debts slowly. Yi Chen remembers during his accident, there was a woman named Chu Bingyu who made a sudden turn to avoid hitting Yi Chen and ended up hitting a barrier and was seriously injured. Yi Chen thinks he is to blame for what happened, so he thinks he must see Chu Bingyu in order to resolve the problem. On the other hand, Chu Bingyu's parents are worried because of their daughter's accident. And when her mother asks Dr. Chen how her daughter is, he replies Chu Bingyu's situation is very strange and the injuries caused by the accident is not critical, but she is experiencing organ failure all of a sudden. The doctor says every test run on Chu Bingyu shows that she is reaching the end of her life and her mother is shocked at how that could happen. Bingyu's father requests the doctor to save his daughter and Chu family is willing to pay any price for that. Dr. Chen says he has been in this profession for decades, saving countless people, so according to his judgment, even God won't be able to save his daughter. Bingyu's parents are devastated by how this could happen, and her mother is upset to think that this is how her daughter is going to end. Suddenly, Yi Chen arrives there, saying it's a joke and asking who said that even God can't save her. 
Bing Yu's mother recognizes Yi Chen and that he is the one in the footage who ran into the middle of the road all of a sudden, causing her daughter to run into an obstacle. Bing Yu's father furiously asks if Yi Chen is there to ask for death, but Yi Chen agrees that Bing Yu's accident does have something to do with her, so he is there to save her. Dr. Chen calls Yi Chen a lunatic with a mouth full of lies, tells him to get out, and suggests Chu should be preparing for his daughter's funeral. Yi Chen calls the doctor quite crappy to speak death to someone who is still alive. Yi Chen tells Chu that his daughter was born with a cold constitution, and before she was 10, every day from 3 am to midnight, his daughter's temperature would drop, causing her to shiver. Yi Chen says though it might have gotten better afterwards, it's still happening after every five days. When Yi Chen asks if he is right, Bing Yu's mother shockingly replies that he is right, but when she asks how he knows, Yi Chen replies there is no need for them to know. Yi Chen asks Chu if he is going to allow him to enter and save his daughter or not, to which Chu replies that he allows it and leaves everything in Yi Chen's hands. Yi Chen tells them to excuse him because he doesn't like that there are people around him when he is treating someone, so they should wait outside. After seeing Bing Yu, Yi Chen says she is beautiful, and it would have been a pity if she died. Suddenly, Yi Chen starts treating Bing Yu and thinks it seems like she is not naturally born with a cold constitution. She was cast with a frost venomous pest. Yi Chen knows the weaker the host is, the stronger the poison is, but he takes out that venomous pest, which makes him realize that the Chu family has some big rivals. Yi Chen knows that venomous pests like this could only be cast when the person is in the last stage of Kai refining. Yi Chen feels the poison is gone. But the cold energy is still there, so he says he can only keep her alive for now, and they can get rid of that cold energy next time. Yi Chen, while treating her, says the canon of supreme mystery is the top cultivation method in the cultivation realm, and the energy cultivated from it is also one of the origins of the universe. Yi Chen thinks giving Bing Yu a surge of energy would be enough to keep her alive, but as she feels extremely hot, Yi Chen thinks he has given too much energy. Suddenly, when Bing Yu gets up, she yells and asks Yi Chen who he is and what he is doing there, to which Yi Chen replies that he is there to save her. Meanwhile, Bing Yu's parents and the doctor arrive, and they are shocked to see she is awake. Bing Yu's mother emotionally hugs her because she thinks she is going to lose her forever. Meanwhile, when the doctor checks Bing Yu, he is shocked that Yi is a god coming true, because all of Bing Yu's failing organs are functioning back to normal. Chen calls Yi a brilliant doctor and says even Yama would have a headache if he saw it. The doctor immediately bowed to Yi Chen, saying it was his fault that he had disrespected him and asked for Yi Chen's forgiveness. Yi Chen says it's all right because there is a limit to Dr. Chen's skill and vision, and it would only be normal not to believe him. The doctor thinks Yi Chen's skill is godly, so he says if Yi Chen doesn't mind, he is willing to honor Yi as his teacher and learn beside him. Yi Chen thinks the energy in this world is so thin, and it will be hard to cultivate an internal core, but it'll be better to use some external pills first to improve his power. So he tells the doctor that there is no need to honor him because there are a few things he needs. Yi Chen gives the doctor a list and says if the doctor is able to get the things for him, he'll be willing to teach the doctor a trick or two. The doctor takes the slip and says he'll put in all his efforts to get what Yi Chen wants. The doctor says even if he failed to be Yi Chen's apprentice, it would have been an honor if Yi Chen had been willing to teach him something. Meanwhile, Bing Yu asks her mother what is going on, so her father tells her the whole thing. A few minutes later, Bing Yu thanks Yi Chen for saving her life, but Yi says it's nothing, and they are even now. Chu says Yi has done them a huge deed, and he, Chu Tianhong, could never forget this. When Chu asks how this could be even, Yi Chen replies that Bing Yu is fine, so they don't owe him anything, but Chu says it would only be rude of him if he kept on being persistent. Chu says if Yi Chen needs any help in the future, he'll do his best to help him. Yi Chen tells Bing Yu to be cautious of her diet, keep herself warm, and tone down with cold foods to avoid getting cold. After this, when Yi Chen leaves the hospital, he gets a call from his father, who asks Yi why it took him so long to pick up, and if he arrived at Zhongnan to see Liu Yuxi. 
Yi Chen replies to his dad that he saw her, but they broke up, to which his father replies that there is no need to force himself if the two are not suitable for each other. Yi Chen's father tells him to get himself together soon and not let the sadness get to him. Yi Chen's father tells him to go pay his uncle Deng and aunt Zheng a visit when he is free because they looked after him a lot when he was young. Yi Chen tells his father not to worry because he'll go. He remembers in the past, he insisted on being with Liu Yuxi, and that is what caused everything to go downhill. Yi Chen is happy because he is finally able to listen to his dad's voice after 3000 years. Yi Chen used to think his dad was annoying back then, but now that he is listening to it, it makes him feel warm. After some while, Yi Chen reaches the place where his uncle and aunt live and thinks he'll finally repay his aunt's kindness after 3000 years. Suddenly, Yi Chen sees some goons outside his uncle's apartment, and he hears one of those guys saying that Zhang is rich, so they should ask for more interest or else their brother who will be the one they'll be talking to. Considering the situation, Yi Chen assumes that they are causing trouble for Auntie Zhang and one of those goons after seeing Yi Chen ask if he is an acquaintance of Zhang who wants to stand up for her. The guy warns Yi Chen to better be ready if he wants to get involved in this because she owes them 5 million, and if she can't hand out that money today, they'll beat up her whole family, including Yi Chen. Suddenly, Yi Feng kicks that guy Jai, making him fall into a dustbin, which terrifies the other goons. Yi Chen says if all of them leave this place now, he'll still spare their life. After some while, Yi Chen rings the bell of his aunt's house, and as she opens it, she asks him why he is in Jian Nan, to which he replies that he is there for an internship for Jia Ran so he can visit both her and his uncle. Yi Chen's aunt says that now Yi Chen is there, so she'll make him his favorite food and tells her husband, Lao Deng, who is reading a newspaper, to see who has arrived. Lao Deng is happy to see Yi Chen because he has not seen him for a few years. When Lao Deng asks how Yi Chen's father is, Chen replies that his father is working in a shoe factory, and Lao says Yi Chen's father has been working there for a long time. Lao Deng says Yi Chen comes from a poor family, so he should work harder to lift some weight off his father's shoulders. Lao says when he was Yi Chen's age, he had already opened a company in Zhongnan, but Yi Chen, with an uninterested expression, says yes, which makes Lao furious because Yi Chen is not even listening to him. Lao Deng thinks he could already see how Yi Chen's future could be. Meanwhile, Lao Deng's daughter arrives there. And when she asks who this boy is, her father replies Yi Chen is the son of Uncle Yi, their ex-neighbor, and Yi Chen is there to get some work in Jiangnan. The girl says she does not remember it, and thinks this unknown stranger has come to their house from nowhere, so he is probably trying to ask for their help. A few minutes later, while having dinner, Yi Chen tells his aunt that her cooking is still as good as it was after all those years. Meanwhile, his cousin thinks Yi Chen is flattering, and he is going to ask for their help next. Suddenly, Zhang asks if Yi Chen has a girlfriend, to which he replies he doesn't have one, so Zhang says it's great. Zhang says Yi Chen might not have known this, but both they and Yi Chen's father actually arranged for Yi Chen and Ling Xiu to get married. Ling Xiu gets shocked and furiously asks her mother if this is some kind of a joke. Ling Xiu thought Yi Chen was there to ask for their help but she didn't know he was there for her. Ling Xu thinks it's the modern age, but this man is still thinking of old traditions. Suddenly, Yi Chen says his aunt must have remembered this incorrectly because he never heard his father mention this. Zhang replied they were thinking of bringing it up after Ling Xu graduated, but they didn't expect Yi Chen to be in Zhang Nan now. Suddenly, Ling Xu yells that it's an age of free love and there is no more of that old arranged marriage thing. Ling Xu tells Yi Chen to look at himself as a man who wouldn't think about how to work hard, but instead thinks of how to get a wife with all these old traditions. Ling Xu furiously asks what kind of man Yi Chen is, which infuriates Ling Xu's mother, and she scolds Ling Xu that this is not how they treat a guest. Ling Xu asks her mother why she is defending people like him and says she is done. Suddenly, Lao Deng tells Yi Chen to follow him, and when they go to the terrace, Lao Deng says what Ling Xu said is not wrong, and even if Yi Chen's family is poor, he still has to have ambition. 
Lao Deng suggests Yi Chen should be thinking about how to work hard to make money instead of relying on the old traditions to get himself a wife and a family. Lao Deng offers Yi Chen a hundred thousand and tells him to see it as funding since both his father and Lao Deng were quite close back then. Lao Deng tells Yi Chen to forget about the arranged marriage between him and Ling Xiu, but Yi Chen says his uncle has misunderstood, and if it wasn't for Auntie mentioning it, he wouldn't even know there was such a thing, and he wouldn't have believed in it either. Yi Chen says he still has a lot of unfinished business in Zhongnan, so he decides to leave and says he'll visit them again once he has settled down. Uncle Deng says he is a smart person, so he should work hard to change his family's condition, and both he and Ling Xiu might still have a chance. Before leaving, Yi Chen tells his aunt that he'll visit when he is free, and if there are any difficulties, they should call him, and he'll do his best to help. Auntie says he is a good kid and she didn't take care of him for anything, but she wonders why Yi Chen is telling her all this and if he knows that she is in debt. On the other hand, Hu, the leader of the guys Yi Chen has beaten, gets furious at his men for not being able to get a small amount back. Hu yells at them that a dog is worth more than them, and Jai says he knows he is useless, but that kid is really powerful because he knocked him down with a single punch. Hu kicks Jai, and when he asks where that kid is and how dare he disrespect them, suddenly Yi Chen arrives there and asks if Hu is looking for him. Hu's lackeys get happy that Hu is going to beat Yi Chen and Hu says this kid is dead meat. After being out there for so many years, Hu says he has never seen anyone who dares to give him an attitude, and Yi Chen is the first one. Hu punches Yi Chen with great force in his chest, but Yi Chen is standing still. Whose lackeys think Yi Chen is startled, and they say whose speed and strength are practically the same as a professional wrestler, so they think Yi Chen is done for. Suddenly, Yi Chen moves behind Hu and presses a pressure point in his armpit, making him scream in pain. Whose lackeys get shocked that he is overpowered and his arm goes numb. Suddenly, Yi Chen moves to hit him again, and Hu gets scared to see that Yi Chen is a martial artist who can kill him, but suddenly, Yi Chen stops before hitting Hu. Hu is shocked to see this, and when Yi Chen asks if they can talk now, Hu thanks him for sparing his life. Hu tells Yi Chen that there is no need to pay back the debt and the interest Yi Chen's auntie owed and take it as an apology gift. Yi Chen says they'll pay back how much they owe, and that is the line, but he asks Hu why Auntie Zhang is in debt. Who replies to Yi Chen that Auntie Zhang said her company was in debt, and she was in need of the money to recover from that. Yi Chen immediately remembers the energy on the blue star is thin, so it's impossible for them to have a cultivator appear out of nowhere. Yi Chen thinks he has to know more, and who calls him a martial artist, which he says he is not, but he is interested, so he asks if who can tell him about this in more detail. Meanwhile, Ling Xiu is taking out the garbage when she sees Yi Chen talking to Hu. She thinks Yi Chen is thinking of living off a woman and messing around with the gangsters, so he is going to jail one day. After some while, when Hu has finished talking about martial artists, Yi Chen tells them they can leave. As Yi Chen also starts to leave, Jai tells Hu that even if Yi Chen is good at fighting, Hu doesn't need to be so nice to him, but Hu asks Jai what he knows. Who says if his guess is correct, Yi Chen's existence is the same as Master Jiao Lei, who is Hu's boss and the head of the entire underground of Zhongnan City. Jai is shocked to know that Yi Chen is on the same level as Master Lei. After some while, when Yi Chen goes home, he remembers that according to what Quan Hu said, the martial arts in this world are categorized into light energy, dark energy, and transformation energy. According to Yi Chen's knowledge, the fourth level Kai refining cultivator is the equivalent of a light energy martial artist. In cultivation, there are nine realms, including Kai refining, foundation establishment, gold core, nascent soul, divine transformation, consolidation, Mahayana, and tribulation. Yi Chen has achieved the Mahayana realm in his past life, so even if he has to start over again, he still has thousands of years of cultivation experience. Yi Chen thinks with the help of the Canon of Supreme Mystery, it'll be an easy job. As expected, Yi Chen achieved 4th level Kai refining in an hour, and he thinks everything was rocky at the start, 
but once Dr. Chen Ping got him some medicines, he could start on core cultivation. Suddenly, Yi Chen gets a call from Chu Bingyu, and when he asks if she needs anything, she says Yi Chen has just arrived in Kayan Chuan, so it might be hard for him to rent a house. Coincidentally, Bingyu's family has an empty house, so she says if he doesn't mind, he can settle down there. Yi Chen replies he'll take the offer and tells Bingyu to send him his address so he'll be there and he'll get rid of the cold energy in her body as well. A while later, when Yi Chen goes there, Bingyu asks if he likes the place, to which Yi Chen replies he doesn't have much to ask for. Suddenly, when Bingyu asks when Yi Chen will remove the cold energy from her body, he replies they can do it right now. After going inside, Yi Chen completely removes the cold energy from her body and tells her that she is free to leave. Bingyu thanks Yi Chen and tells him that her father is having a banquet tomorrow night at the Moon Palace. Bingyu hopes he'll be there and Yi Chen says he'll come. After Bingyu leaves Yi Chen, while standing on his terrace, feels quite nice and thinks the spiritual energy on a mountaintop is sufficient. Yi Chen wonders if the villa is the center, and he is building a spiritual gathering formation around it. Suddenly, Yi Chen sees some guys in a villa next to his, and he sees there is a girl who doesn't look right. The girl Ning Kui is unconscious, and a guy named Feng near her asks why she can't be obedient and how she has to make him force himself onto her. Feng says he has slept with many who are more famous than her, so she should stop playing the innocent card. Suddenly, Feng's men request him to share her with them also, for which he agrees, and Feng tells one of them to set the camera in place immediately. Feng says once they get a good shot, Ming Kuyi will have to obey them, and when one of the guys rushes to close the curtains, he notices Yi Chen is watching them. The guy immediately tells Feng that there is someone out there, and he sees them, so Feng tells his man to go grab the guy and immediately bring that guy to him because he'll pay him to keep it private. Suddenly, Feng changes his mind and orders his men to kill that guy, and he'll pay his men a million afterwards, for which his men instantly agree. While they are talking, suddenly Yi Chen enters the room by breaking the window and says they dragged a woman, yet still thinking of murdering him. Yi Chen calls them shameless and asks if they really think he did not hear that, but Feng's men are confused about how Yi Chen came in there. Feng asks his men what they are afraid of and orders them to kill Yi Chen because no one knows what happened there. One of Feng's men says Yi Chen has only himself to blame for snooping into other people's business. Suddenly, Yi Chen stabs all of Yi Chen's men with the pieces of broken glass from the window, which terrifies Fong, and Yi Chen says it seems like Fong is the one behind all this. Fong begs Yi Chen not to kill him because he has connections, so Yi Chen will be in trouble if he kills him. Suddenly, Yi Chen kicks Fong into a wall, and he dies on the spot. Now Yi Chen is worried about how to clean the scene and the bodies because it'll be a problem if he doesn't. A few minutes later, Ming Kiyui wakes up, and after seeing Yi Chen, she asks, worriedly, who he is. Ming Kiyui remembers she was drunk and thinks Yi Chen followed her to her room to smear her reputation. Ming says she needs to call the cops, but Yi Chen immediately faints her. Yi Chen thinks it'll be a huge nuisance to explain all those dead bodies if she sees them and thinks since he has already been involved in this, he has to end it. Yi Chen calls Quan who because he has a difficult issue for which he needs Hu's help. After some while, Hu's men have taken care of the dead bodies and tell Yi Chen they'll be leaving. A while later, when Ning wakes up, she asks where she is and what happened, to which Yi Chen replies she has been dragged, but he saved her. Yi Chen says her headache is just the side effect of the drug and it'll be over soon, but Ning yells that it's he who followed her and wanted to do something to her. Yi Chen tells her to think whatever she wants, and seeing him calm, Ning wonders if she is misunderstanding. Ning wonders where Director Feng is because he was eager to escort her there and wonders if it was Feng who drugged her. Suddenly, she sees a camera there and wonders if it has recorded something. After Yi Chen leaves, Ning sees the recording and becomes furious to see it's the director who did it, but she feels embarrassed to know Yi Chen is the one who saved her. 
On the other hand, Yi Chen, while cultivating in his room, feels good to have spiritual energy around him and thinks if he were back in the old place, he'd probably have taken up to 10 days to stabilize the realm. Yi Chen thinks once the pill has been cultivated, he'll be able to finish up the evolution with the help of the spiritual gathering formation and breakthrough into the last stage. Yi Chen remembers his tribulation that failed during his past life was not just because of his inner demons, but because he advanced too quickly, causing his foundation to collapse. While Yi Chen thinks he must build his foundation in this life, suddenly, the bell rings, and when he opens the door he sees Ning there. Yi Chen asks her why she is there, and if she needs anything, Ning replies it's raining, and there is heavy thunder, so adding on the things that happen during the day, she is a bit scared. Suddenly, when Ning asks if she can stay there for a night, Yi Chen says she thinks he is following and harassing her. Ning replies she saw the recording and she has a photo shoot tomorrow, so she'll go back tomorrow morning and won't bother him for too long. Yi Chen tells her to come in, and she thanks him that he is such a good person. After changing her clothes, Ning says this is actually the first time she entered the number one villa since, usually, the Chu family would only use it to serve guests and not for sale. Ning can't believe Yi Chen actually managed to buy it, but Yi Chen replies he didn't buy it. He helped the Chu family, and this was a gift. Yi Chen tells her that if she is going to sleep there, then she should be quiet. So she replies she knows and she won't make a single noise. While Ning lies near Yi Chen, she feels weirdly comforted to be around Yi Chen and she apologizes for misunderstanding him, but Yi Chen tells her not to mind and goes to sleep. Suddenly, Ning asks if he is a killer because she has seen he is trained through his moves. Suddenly, when Yi Chen doesn't respond, Ning asks if he is asleep and how a killer can let his guard down. Ning furiously yells if she is so uninteresting to him, but in the morning, when Yi Chen wakes up, he wonders if she really left early. Yi Chen realizes it's not an easy job to be an actress and remembers he should be working at the internship company because it's a mortal world, and he needs a mortal identity. A few minutes later, when Yi Chen comes out of his room, he is surprised to see Ning even making breakfast for him and leaving a thank you note with her phone number. After some time, Yi Chen goes to Jia Ran Food Inc., where a girl takes him to the planning department, where he'll be having his internship. Meanwhile, Yi Chen hears some female workers saying that he is Liu Yuxi's boyfriend and he looks good and all, but they never expected him to be abusive. The girls discussed when Yuxi came to work in the morning, the bandage was still on her face, and they heard Yi Chen burn her with cigarettes. The girls say that Yuxi is such a nice girl and they cannot believe she is with an abusive man. Yuxi's friend tells her to break up with him because he is just a worker from a small town who is broke and useless, and now he is abusing her. Yuxi's friend tells her to remember Yuan Hao, who drove her to work at Porsche, is a good guy, and his father is the higher-ups of the Education Bureau. Yuxi's friend says Yuan seems like a smart guy who is better than Yi Chen, but Yuxi tells her friend Ji Ping to stop it because both he and Yuan are just normal friends. Ji Ping says Yi Chen still has the audacity to come in for work, so she'll teach him a lesson for Yuan and goes up to Yi Chen. Ji Ping tells Yi Chen to be grateful because Yuxi is with him, calls him a broke prick, but asks how he repays her. Ji Ping says if it was not for the bandage on Yuxi's face, they would not even know that she is getting abused at home. Ji Ping tells Yi Chen to knock some sense in his head and ask if he thinks he deserves Yuxi, to which Yi Chen replies that they are a bunch of brainless idiots. Yi Chen tells Ji Ping that they have been lied to by Yuxi, yet they still remain clueless. Yi Chen realizes Yuxi had already started to play the victim card even before he entered the company. Suddenly Yuxi, while bawling, says she doesn't care if Yi Chen uses her money, beats her, or even abuses her but she has tried so hard to find her an internship in hopes that she'll be on the right path. She asks why he is humiliating her friend on the first day of work. When Yuxi asks if he thinks of her as a pushover, suddenly, a guy arrives and asks what they are all doing there and if they don't have work to do. This guy is the manager of the planning department Chen Kun, and when he asks Yuxi why she is crying and what happened to her face, Yuxi replies it's nothing. 
Ji Ping immediately tells Chen Kun about the whole thing, and Chen Kun thinks if he shames Yi Chen and makes Liu Yuxi so ashamed of him, she will break up with him and accept young master Yuan. Chen Kun thinks they managed to make a couple of deals due to Yuan even before Yuxi dated Yuan, and if they actually become a thing, they'll be able to get more deals. Chen Kun thinks the planning department will do better than ever, so he thinks he has to get rid of Yi Chen, all for the good of the planning department. Suddenly, Chen Kun says he knows what happened between Yi Chen and Yuxi, and what surprises him is that a girl as capable as Yuxi would get together with someone like Yi Chen. Yi Chen says he thinks what manager Chen means by capable is Yuxi's ability to rely on someone else to make a business deal. Meanwhile, Yuxi asks how dare he talk like this to the manager and that he should have some manners, but suddenly manager Chen Kun tells them to stop and tells Yi Chen that he won't discuss Yi Chen's private matter with Yuxi, but starting today Yi Chen is an intern in the planning department, so Chen Kun says he has his standards. Chen Kun says Yuxi has made an exceptional record for an intern within a month of joining the planning department. That's why he said Yuxi is capable. Chen Kun says they have standards for each and every employee in their department, so he tells Yi Chen not to blame them for kicking him out if he can't achieve them. Suddenly, Yi Chen says he will not fall behind since he is Yuxi's boyfriend. Yi Chen knows Yuxi is playing all these tricks to have him break up with her so that she'll be able to get with Yu and Hao without damaging her reputation, but Yi Chen will not let her have that. Suddenly, Yuxi yells that she knows that Yi Chen is doing this to disgust her, so she says she'll see how he performs his task as a low-life worker from the small town. Simultaneously, Chen Kun taunts Yi Chen that Yuxi trusts Yi Chen so much that he gives him a challenging task, and Yuxi, pretending to be nice, also says she is sure Yi Chen can do this. Chen Kun says one of their main jobs in the planning department is to promote their company's product, but now Jia Ran is missing a brand ambassador. Chen Kun says the seniors in this department have talked to multiple celebrities and influencers from Zhongnan, but there was never a suitable one, and even Yuxi failed the task. Suddenly, Chen Kun says that since Yi Chen thinks he is more capable than Yuxi, he will hand the task to Yi Chen and give him three days for it. Yi Chen asks if the celebrity is all Chen Kun wants, and then it's an easy task but Ji Ping tells him not to make her laugh with little confidence. Ji Ping says she has been working in the planning department for three years, and she has never seen a newbie succeed. Suddenly, Yi Chen calls Ning and tells her that he is in the planning department of Jia Ran Food Inc., and there is a collaboration he wants to talk to her about. Ning tells Yi Chen to wait for her and that she'll be there soon. Yi Chen tells everyone that a celebrity is on their way, but his colleagues make fun of him and ask if the celebrity is his employee. They call him delusional, and they say it's hilarious because they have never seen such a shameless person. Ji Ping tells Yuxi that this guy is only good at acting, so she should break up with him, and Yuxi replies she has never thought he has changed into someone like this. Yuxi says she'll talk to Yi Chen and takes him with her, while Ji Ping tells her to break up with him and not trust his sweet words. Yuxi reminds Yi Chen that he was good to her back then, but asks why he can't think from her point of view. Yuxi says she has a bright future here, and if they found out that she cheated, how could she continue to work there? When Yuxi asks if he can't just end things with her, Yi Chen replies she is the one who cheated, yet he has to be the one protecting her reputation and breaking up with her, so he asks if he looks like an idiot to her. Yuxi asks if he thinks he is innocent in all this and asks if it wasn't for him being broke, would she have cheated? Suddenly, Yi Chen furiously punches the wall behind her and says she is the one who messed up, so he tells her not to go out of her way and imagine that he'll be the thoughtful one. Yi Chen tells her to remember that she doesn't deserve it and to stop bothering him from now on or else she'll regret it. While Yi Chen leaves, Yuxi warns that if she can't have a good life, then he won't, and once his D-level celebrity arrives, she'll make him feel embarrassed. Meanwhile, Ji Ping arrives, and when she asks how it went, Yuxi replies she never thought Yi Chen had changed, and says she has decided she'll break up with him. Ji Ping says it's good because Yuxi should have made that decision years ago. 
He tells her to get together with Yuen because he treats her way better. Suddenly, Ning Kiyuyi arrives there, and everyone is shocked to see that it's the popular celebrity Ning Kiyuyi. They wonder why a popular celebrity like her would be there, and they start to tell her that they are fans of her. Suddenly, Chen Kun arrives there and tells Ning that he is the manager of the planning department at Jia Ran Food Inc. When Chen Kun asks if she is there to talk about the collaboration, Ning Kiyui replies that's right. Chen Kun thinks an enlist celebrity like Ning is probably young Master Yuan's effort, so he tells her that she can head into his office and they can talk. Chen Kun thinks if they are able to sign a contract with such a famous celebrity, the bonus would have been tripled, so he thinks he must take this chance. Suddenly, Ning rushes towards Yi Chen and asks if she is fast, to which Yi Chen replies it's alright, and he won't say she is slow. Yi Chen says his company is missing a brand ambassador, so he asks if Ning Kyuyi wants to do it, to which Ning replies that she'll. Chen Kun is shocked that Yi Chen is the one who brought Ning there and Ji Ping can't believe Ning Kiyuyi said yes so lightly too. Yuxi thinks it's impossible and wonders why she didn't know that Yi Chen knows such a celebrity. Suddenly, Yi Chen tells manager Chen Kun that the collaboration is set and they can discuss the fees a bit. Chen Kun gets worried about hearing this because the company's budget is only around a couple hundred thousand, and he is afraid they can't have a celebrity like Ning. Suddenly, Yuxi starts to get mad at Yi Chen because manager Chen Kun only asked him to invite over a normal celebrity, but he had Miss Ning, an enlist celebrity. Yuxi asks Yi Chen if he has ever even thought about whether the company is able to pay for the collaboration, to which Yi Chen replies that today was his first day of work, so he didn't know their company was broke. Meanwhile, Ning Kiyuyi says her collaboration fees are quite high, starting from 5 million, but says she never mentioned she want collaboration fees from Yi Chen. Ning Kiyuyi says she can't compare a mere 5 million to Yi Chen's job and tells everyone to think of it as a boost for Yi Chen's sales. Suddenly, Ning says they can discuss with her assistant further details because she is going out to have lunch with Yi Chen, to which manager Chen Kun nervously replies okay. Meanwhile, Yi Chen says Ning is probably tired from rushing there, so he says he'll treat her to lunch, but Ning says she should be the one treating him to lunch because he saved her life. On the other hand, Chen Kun can't understand what makes Yi Chen so deserving, and Ping thinks Ning must have been lied to by Yi Chen because it's easy for him to manipulate another girl as a boy who is good at gaslighting. Meanwhile, Yuxi wonders how Yi Chen can have the courage to say that she is the one who betrayed her because he is the one who betrayed her. Yuxi thinks Ning Kiyuyi would never want a broke guy like Yi Chen, and she is definitely lied to. Yuxi is waiting for the day Ning finds out about Yi Chen's reality, and the consequences that Yi Chen is getting are going to be much worse. After some time before leaving for work, Ning tells Yi Chen if he needs anything, he can call her anytime and says they'll see each other at home tonight. Yi Chen replies okay to her, but he thinks she is saying this as if they are going to the same home. After she leaves, Yi Chen gets a call from Miss Chu Bingyu, who informs him that the banquet is starting soon and asks if he needs her to pick him up, to which Yi Chen replies she surely can, and he is at the intersection between Road Dong Lai and Road Chun Lai. When Bingyu asks if he needs any styling or new clothes because she can bring them for him, Yi Chen replies it's too much of a hassle. Suddenly, when Yi Chen asks if he should take it as if Chu Bingyu is embarrassed by him, she replies, why would she be embarrassed by him and says Yi Chen is their family's special guest, so he is free to wear anything. Bingyu tells Yi Chen to give her a moment and she'll be there in 10 minutes. On the other hand, in a high-end hotel, Moon Palace, Yuxi arrives with Yuan, and she is impressed to see the most luxurious hotel in the entire Zhongnan city. Yuxi tells Yuan how that he is cool because a big family like the Chu family invites him to their banquet. Yuan tells her that with his father's reputation, he is still quite a character in Zhongnan. Suddenly, Yuxi notices Yi Chen there and wonders if he is there with Ning Kiyuyi because Ning Kiyuyi helped him with a 5 million business this afternoon. Yuan thinks it's impossible if she actually brought him with her because why would she agree to have him in rags? She wonders if it is embarrassing. 
Yuxi thinks he must have snuck in, and Yuan says he is looking for death for sneaking into the Chu family's banquet. Suddenly Yuxi, while pointing towards Yi Chen, starts shouting about where the security is and how a stray dog could sneak into Moon Palace. Yuxi tells the security guard to get Yi Chen out of there, but the security guard wonders how someone could sneak into the Moon Palace and the Chu family's banquet. Suddenly, Yuan says that his father is Yuan Zhang from the Education Bureau, and this person, Yi Chen, is his university coursemate, a broke punk. Yuan says he can assure Yi Chen snuck in there, so he tells the guards to get him out, and they trust Yuan to tell Yi Chen to show his invitation card, or they'll have to escort him out. Suddenly, Yi Chen says he was brought in there by Chu Bingyu, and he has never heard of anything about the invitation. After hearing this, Yuan asks how Yi Chen calls out Miss Chu's name directly, and Yuxi tells Yi Chen to write a script for all his lies. Yuxi asks if Yi Chen thinks he has some sort of power because he knows a celebrity, and when the guard furiously asks him to show his invitation, suddenly Chu Bingyu arrives there and tells them to stop it. Chu Bingyu furiously says whoever dares to treat Mr. Yi badly is the one who wants to get on her bad side. Yuan is shocked that Chu Bingyu is calling Yi Chen a mister, and Bingyu apologizes to Yi Chen while saying it's her fault. Yuxi tells Bingyu that Yi Chen is a liar and was hitting on another female celebrity this morning with all his sweet words. Bingyu replies she doesn't need Yuxi to tell her what kind of person Mr. Yi is and says before pointing fingers at others, Yuxi better get a reality check on herself. Suddenly, Bingyu tells the security to take Yuan and Yuxi out. And as the security starts dragging them, Yuan tells them that his father, Yuan Zhang, is from the Education Bureau, and they are invited by the Chu family. However, Bingyu says it seems Yuan Zhang never told his son about the intention of the banquet, so she tells Yuan to go home and ask his father. The guards immediately kick them out, and Yuxi starts whining that her new dress is torn. Yuxi can't understand what kind of hex Yi Chen put on Miss Chu Bingyu and wonders what makes him qualified to be in the banquet. Simultaneously, Yuan calls his father and asks what the intention of the Chu family's banquet is, to which his father replies that one of the intentions of the banquet is to celebrate Miss Chu's recovery, and another is to thank the person who saved her. When Yuan's father tells him the last name of that person is Yi, Yuan is shocked. When Yuxi asks Yuan what it is, Yuan replies his father said the Chu family's banquet is intended to thank someone who saved Miss Chu Bingyu, and that person's last name is Yi, so he suspects it might be Yi Chen. Yuxi says it's impossible because Yi Chen was in a car accident right when he arrived at Zhongnan City, so she wonders how Yi Chen could save Miss Chu Bingyu. Suddenly, Yuan remembered there was an Audi that crushed into the pier on the day Yi Chen got into a car accident so he realized the car might possibly be Miss Chu Bingyu. Yuxi worriedly asks if that is true. Then, did Yi Chen really save Miss Chu Bingyu and wonders if it means Yi Chen is practically rich now? Yuan thinks it's ridiculous because the banquet is just a show put on for others to see and asks who would remember a small character like Yi Chen after tonight. Yuan furiously says that after this whole incident dies down, Yi Chen has to pay back what he has done. On the other hand, Bingyu tells everyone that Yi Chen is the main character of the night, so everyone should treat him nicely, or else don't blame her for being harsh. Everyone replies they understand, and Yuxi tells Yi Chen that all the dignitaries from all the corners of Zhongnan City are there to thank Yi Chen, so she asks if he minds showing himself. Yi Chen replies he doesn't, and they should go for it. Meanwhile, Bingyu thinks a normal person like Yi Chen doesn't even show a sign of distress even when he is in the center of Zhang Nan's dignitaries. Bingyu thinks what her father said is true, that Mr. Yi is indeed a talented person. Suddenly, Bingyu says she'll lead the way, and while they are walking, Yi Chen asks if she is always this rough with people, to which she replies she is not, but Yuan and Yuxi are harsh towards Yi Chen, so she does that. Yi Chen says it's all right, and he likes people who are straightforward. Bingyu feels flattered, but she thinks what Mr. Yi said does not have another meaning, and she should not think over it. After some while, Mr. Chu thanked all their guests who still chose to participate in their banquet despite their busy schedules. 
Mr. Chu tells everyone that his daughter was in a car accident a couple of days back, and if it weren't for the help of Yi Chen, he might be crying in front of a grave now. People start to say Miss Chu Bingyu is a very fortunate person. Her luck will come soon, and the future of the Chu family will be even better. But Bingyu tells them that the main character of this banquet is Mr. Yi. Meanwhile, Mr. Chu says he is afraid that they all might not know about Yi Chen yet, but Yi is an expert doctor. Everyone was shocked because the ones who qualified to be called experts were all the elderly seniors in the medical industry, so they thought Yi Chen was a bit too young for that. While people are wondering how good Yi Chen is, suddenly Dr. Chen says Mr. Yi's skill is above his and he is qualified to be called an expert. Yi Chen tells Dr. Chen he is nice, but Chen says Yi has achieved a lot at a young age. Simultaneously, people discuss that Elder Chen is the dean of Zhang Nan's medical industry, and if he also agrees with it, then that means Mr. Yi's skill is indeed incredible. Meanwhile, Dr. Chen tells Yi that he has gotten all the medicines Yi asked for, so he asks when he will send them to Yi Chen. Yi Chen replies it's really quick of Dr. Chen and tells him to send it tomorrow at noon to the number one villa at Dragon Slumber Mountain. Suddenly, everyone becomes attentive to the Elder Chu, who arrives there and is a famous martial artist. Elder Chu asks Yi Chen if he is the one who saved Chu Bingyu. Yi Chen replies he is the one, so Elder Chu thanks Yi for saving his precious granddaughter. Elder Chu says Yi Chen has magnificent skills, so he asks which senior taught Yi Chen all this, to which Yi Chen replies he has no teacher. Yi Chen says he has never learned anything medical related, and he only knows the bare minimum, but Elder Chu thinks Yi Chen is acting too humble, so he wonders if he is trying to hide who his teacher is. Elder Chu says Yi Chen is a talented young man, and it's normal to be a bit arrogant, so he says it's fine. Elder Chu takes out an official stamp of the Han Dynasty that he managed to bid back then, and he has been keeping it on him for years. When Elder Chu says he'll give this to Yi Chen in order to thank him, Mr. Chu shockingly says this was his father's favorite, and it never left his father's side for almost six years. Elder Chu tells his son Chu Chanhong that nothing is more precious than the deed Mr. Yi Chen has done for them. However, Yi Chen knows this stamp from the Han Dynasty is fake, and judging by the look of Chu Jian Feng, Yi Chen thinks it doesn't look like he is playing with him. Yi Chen realizes Chu Jian Feng might not know it's fake, and he decides he'll save Chu Jian Feng's life too, since he is willing to sacrifice what he has. Yi Chen saved Chu Bingyu in order to put an end to things that happened due to him, but now Elder Chu is sacrificing something he loves, so Yi Chen feels guilty for accepting it. Suddenly, Yi Chen says he can see there is some hidden illness in Chu Jian Feng and says he'll treat that for him at another time. Chu Jian Feng is shocked that Yi Chen is able to see it, so he tells his son that expert Yi's skill is as magnificent as Dr. Chen said. Chu Jian Feng says Yi Chen is able to know his actual condition with just one look, and it's truly incredible. Chu Jian Feng says his body is getting weaker and weaker starting this year, and it might not look like it, but if this continues, he might not be able to last long. Chu says he didn't tell them all about this because he was not able to find where the illness is, so he doesn't want this to affect them. Suddenly, Qian Hong guarantees Yi Chen that as long as Yi Chen is able to treat his father, he is willing to fulfill any of his requirements. Bing Yu also requests Yi Chen to save her grandpa, so Yi Chen says a more detailed checkup is still needed to find out what the actual illness is, but he'll do his best. Qian Hong says he has heard that Yi Chen has not graduated from university yet and is now an intern at a food company, so he tells Bing Yu to buy that company and give it to Mr. Yi. Bing Yu says she'll do it right away, and Yi Chen says if they insist, he'll take it. Yi Chen knows that Jiang is in need of money, so she might need this, and the good thing is that this can resolve some matters for her now. After some time, while going home, Yi Chen thinks Chu Jianfeng's illness might be caused by demonic items, and the bigger possibility is that the thing that caused the freeze poison on Chu Bingyu is the same as Chu Jianfang. Yi Chen thinks if that is the case, then things are getting more and more interesting. After some time, Yi Chen goes home and is about to enter the house. 
Ming Kiyuyi opens the door and asks where he has been because he is quite late. Yi Chen says he doesn't think that has anything to do with her and asks what she is doing in his house, to which Ning replies he didn't lock his door and she is still a bit terrified to live in her house by herself. When Yi Chen asks if she has decided she is just going to be here, Ning Kuyuyi tells him not to be so harsh and to help a lady out. Ning says he is not around and she doesn't feel safe, so Yi Chen says she can sleep in the guest room, but he tells her not to come into his and bother him. Ning calls him insensitive and leaves, saying that she'll sleep on her own. On the other hand, Yi Chen starts practicing cultivation, and thinks once Dr. Chen Pingjai's medicines have arrived, he'll have to break through to the fifth level of Kai refining. Yi Chen thinks, based on both Chu Jianfeng's and Chu Bingyu's condition, there are much more interesting matters on earth than he originally thought, so he has to raise his realm quicker. Meanwhile, Ning is watching Yi Chen and says she is coming in, but she says that it's not like she wants to sleep with him, she is a bit scared. Ning starts asking questions about what Yi Chen is cultivating, why he is meditating, and if he is asleep, but Yi Chen says she is bothering him, so either she sleeps or gets out. Ning thinks he is a weirdo, but she goes to sleep while thinking it feels much better to have him by her side. The next morning, Ning is preparing breakfast when the bell rings, and when she opens the door, Dr. Chen Pingjai is standing there and asks her if this is Mr. Yi's house. Ning replies it's Yi's house and tells Chen Pingjai to come in while she goes to call Yi Chen, but Pingjai thinks she seems familiar. Meanwhile, Yi Chen arrives there and asks if Ning doesn't have work, to which she replies she needs to film a commercial at his company today, so she gets going. After she leaves, Chen Pingjai gives Yi the things Yi Chen wants, and Yi Chen says it's not bad. Yi Chen asks for a pen and paper from Chen Pingjai, and as he gives it, Yi Chen starts writing something on it while saying that he said he'd teach Chen something, so here it is, but it's all up to Chen Pingjai now on how much he could learn. After giving the paper to Chen Pingjai, Yi Chen takes his things and goes to his room, telling the doctor to suit himself. But when Chen Pingjie sees the notes, he is shocked at what Yi has written. On the other hand, Yi Chen is sitting in his room with the things Chen Pingjie brought lying around him. Yi Chen thinks these things are really good, and thinks it seems he'll be able to cultivate a good quality medical pill. Suddenly, Yi Chen creates a common level spiritual pill, and thinks his spiritual fire gesture is still alright. Yi Chen thinks the spiritual energy that is in this common level spiritual pill is enough to help him break through the fifth level of Kai refining. Yi Chen consumes the pill and suddenly he breaks through the sixth level of Kai refining. Yi Chen feels it's wild to think that a common level spiritual pill is able to help him break through two levels and bring him straight to the sixth level of Kai refining. Yi Chen feels the energy inside him is like nothing he has experienced before. Yi Chen decides to go to the company and check on Ning Kiyuyi's filming progress, but as he comes out of his room, he is shocked to see Chen Pingjai bowing to him. When Yi Chen asks what Pingjai is doing, he replies that Yi Chen is really a god who came to life and said he has only read a small part of what Yi has written, but he feels like he has acknowledged so much more. Chen Pingjai says it feels like everything he has ever learned doesn't matter anymore. Chen Pingjai knows he is born stupid, and he knows he might never meet the requirements in Yi Chen's eyes, but he is willing to respect Yi Chen as his teacher and do anything for him. Yi Chen says Chen Pingji is a very sensible person, but that is really just some of his opinions on the medical field, and it's not as holy as Chen Pingji said it to be. Yi Chen tells Chen Pingji to get up quickly because he is quite old and his knees are getting bruised. He says Chen might not be able to be a teacher and student, but if he has anything he doesn't understand, he can ask him. Chen Pingjai says there is one line that he doesn't understand. After some time, Yi Chen goes to Jia Ran Food Inc., where former chairman Zhu Ming gives the company papers to Yi Chen and says from now on, Jia Ran is his. Yi Chen says the Chu family is quite quick with their actions, but about the news of him being the chairman of Jia Ran, he hopes that Zhu Ming can keep that confidential for now. 
When Zhu Ming asks the reason, Yi Chen replies that he'll be able to see the actual performance of the staff in the company so that behaviors like lying don't happen. A while later, when Yi Chen goes to his workplace, manager Chen Kun scolds him for being late and tells him not to think that he is the king there because he managed to make some good performances. Kun says it's Yi Chen's second day of work and he is already late, so he warns that Yi Chen will be gone one more time. Yi Chen thinks it's a fresh view, and he has never seen a manager who could randomly fire an employee. Kun says now not only that Yi Chen is late, but he can't take a bit of scolding, so he decides to have a talk with the Human Resources Department. When Kun calls HR, he tells him that an intern is late and is disrespecting the boss, so they should take note and tell him that there is no need for him to come to work tomorrow. Suddenly, when the HR says Kun doesn't have permission to fire him, he gets shocked and furiously asks what he means that he has no permission. Meanwhile, Yi Chen asks manager Chen Kun if he is fired now. Chen Kun replies he is going to fire Yi, but considering that it's his first time being late, he gives him a chance, and while telling Yi not to be late tomorrow, Chen Kun starts to leave. While Yi Chen is leaving, he furiously makes up his mind that right after Ning Kuo Yi is done with this commercial, he'll have ways to throw Yi Chen out of there. Chen Kun knows the result of Yi Chen's internship will affect his graduation, so he wants to see how Yi Chen begs him then. Meanwhile, Yi Chen gets a call from his father, who asks if he has eaten lunch yet. Yi Chen replies he is going to eat, and when his father asks how his internship is and if his colleagues are treating him well, Yi Chen replies it's alright and tells his father not to worry about it. Yi Chen's father says Jiang gave him a call, and she said Yi Chen visited them. Yi Chen says if it hadn't been for that trip, he wouldn't have known that he actually had an arranged marriage. Yi Chen's father says he is just thinking about his son's future, and he called him this time to talk to him about Lingxiu. After some time, Yi Chen goes to Aunt Zhang's house and thinks his dad wants him to tutor Deng Lingxiu's homework, but he is worried because it's been a long time since he graduated. Yi Chen wonders if his father is trying to set him up with Lingxiu, but thinks that compared to his past life, where he didn't have an older family, he thinks he can count it as a sweet misfortune. Yi Chen rings the bell, and suddenly, Aunt Chang calls Yi Chen to come inside, but Yi Chen sees his Uncle Deng is in a hurry, so he asks his uncle where he is going. Uncle Deng asks if Yi Chen has not heard that the popular actress Ning Kiyuyi has collaborated with Jia Ran Food Inc., which is in their city. Uncle Deng says a small company is able to work with such a big celebrity, and there must be news in it. Uncle Deng says he has an appointment with the marketing manager in the afternoon for an interview, and he heard that the marketing manager is the one in charge of the entire thing. Uncle Deng knows Yi Chen is there to tutor Lingxiu, so he tells him good luck and says he'll treat him after he is done with his work. After Uncle Deng leaves, Yi Chen asks Auntie Zhang if Lingxiu is home, to which Auntie replies she is doing homework in her room and he can go straight in. As Yi Chen goes to her room, Ling Xu says she agrees to let him tutor her purely because she is not able to win against her mom. Ling Xu says now that Yi Chen is here, he has to promise her three things, and if he says no, he can just leave. When Yi Chen says he is listening, Ling Xu says firstly, other than education, she won't talk to him about anything else, and he can't ask about anything either. Secondly, Yi Chen can't touch anything in the room, especially Ling Xu, and thirdly, Ling Xu knows her mom likes Yi Chen, but Ling Sui says there is no possibility between them, so she tells Yi Chen not to fall for her and doesn't even think of doing anything. Ling Xu says if Yi Chen is able to do all these things, then she'll agree to let him tutor her. Yi Chen agrees, but he hopes Ling Xu also understands something as well that he is there because of his dad and Auntie Zhang. Yi Chen says other than education, he is not interested in anything about her, and tells her that she is overthinking because he is not interested in underage teenagers. Ling Xu gets furious, but Yi Chen tells her to stop wasting his time and ask what she doesn't understand. Ling Xu decides to find him the hardest question to see if he knows how to solve it, but Yi Chen replies it's not that hard and she just needs to use a formula. Ling Xu wonders if he could really solve it, so she tells him about another thing that she doesn't get. 
Yi Chen says this is part of the question that is really confusing, but Ling Xiu tells him not to worry because she'll think of a way, and if things really don't work out, then she'll listen to him and try it. Yi Chen knows his aunt needs money, and although he is the head of Jia Ran, he can't just take money from it. So he thinks he has to make money in order to help his aunt. Suddenly, Ling Xiu noticed Yi Chen staring at her, so she got furious, but he apologized because he was spacing out. They continue studying again, but after some time, Ling Xiu says he looks normal, but he is quite an expert when he explains questions. Suddenly, Ling Xiu gets a call from someone because she has to go somewhere, so she tells Yi Chen to go out because she'll change as she is going to the karaoke later with her classmates. Yi Chen gets worried and wonders if she went out this time during her past life. After some time, Yi Chen goes to the Rome Dynasty KTV with Ling Xiu, and she apologizes to her friends that she is late, but her friend asks her who the guy is with her. Ling Xiu replies that Yi Chen is her neighbor's son and tells her friends not to mind him because they can have their own fun. Ling Xiu has told her friend about who Yi Chen is, so she says she thought the arranged marriage between them was called off. When Ling Xiu's friend asks her why she still brings Yi Chen with her, Ling Xiu tells her to ask her mom because she had to have Yi Chen tutor her at home, and now that she is out for karaoke, her mother insists that Yi Chen follows Ling Xiu. Ling Xiu's friend says Auntie Zhang might be worried about Ling Xiu, but they don't know what is going on in Yi Chen's head. Ling Xiu says she'll make sure they get far from each other so that he knows and leaves them alone. Ling Xiu's friend tells her to wait, so she tells Zhu Ziaming and the other guys about this and has them do something. Ling Xiu tries to stop her friend and says there is no need for this, but her friend immediately tells Zhu that the arranged marriage dude followed Ling Xiu there. Zhu, while pointing towards Yi Chen, asks if this loser is trying to get with Ling Xiu with this look. Zhu says he'll just have to show Yi Chen a little bit, and he'll instantly run off. Meanwhile, Ling Xiu wonders if it's alright, and if Yi Chen doubts himself because of this. Simultaneously, Yi Chen thinks Auntie Zhang is not home after the tuition, and hearing the phone call, it seems like she is gambling again. Yi Chen understands it is all because of her debt, so he thinks he has to find a way to make money. Suddenly, one of Ling Xiu's friend loudly, with a wine bottle in his hand, asks Zhu if this bottle of wine is expensive because he heard it cost a couple of thousand, to which Zhu replies most shadows are not expensive, but this bottle is quite old so it's around 50,000. Everyone there is shocked that the bottle costs this much, and they call Zhu nice, but Zhu says it's not that much, and it's just a bottle of 50,000 wine, which they are drinking for fun. Meanwhile, Yi Chen is sitting calmly, so other guys wonder how Yi Chen has no reaction. They start bragging that Zhu is wearing Armani clothes, which cost a lot, but Zhu says it's fine, and it's just that someone has to work hard for their entire life just to buy these. Eventually, they start to wonder why Yi Chen is not reacting yet and wonder if Yi Chen's hearing is okay. Suddenly, a drunk man accidentally enters their room and Zhu recognizes it's his uncle Zhu, so he asks why his uncle drank so much. Zhu recognizes Zhu Ziaming and asks if Zhu is with his friends, making Zhu's friends wonder who this man is. When Zhu's friend says this man can't walk straight, Zhu tells him to shut up because Uncle Zhu is his friend's father and he is a big boss. Zhu grabs the uncle to take him home, but suddenly Zhu looks at Yi Chen and asks if Mr. Yi Chen is there too. Zhu asks his uncle who Mr. Yi is because there is no Mr. Yi there. Uncle Zhu tells Zhu not to be disrespectful, and he says he'll pay his respect to Mr. Yi. Zhu stands in front of Yi and says he cannot believe he could see Mr. Yi there. Suddenly, Zhu starts saying that Yi Chen has brought Jia Ran food ink at triple the market price and says Yi let him make so much, but he has not gotten a chance to thank him. Suddenly, Zhu starts drinking more for joy, which shocks everyone, and Zhu tells Xiaoming that he'll pay for them, so he should have a few glasses with Mr. Yi for Zhu. Zhu is taking his uncle out while Uncle Zhu says goodbye to Yi Chen, but Ling Xiu's friend asks her what is going on because she knows Yi Chen comes from a small town. Ling Xiu replies she doesn't know either, but Zhu asks them what is so surprising and says Uncle Zhu is drunk, so he had the wrong person. 
Suddenly, Link's Yu's friend asks her to accompany him to the washroom, and while they are leaving, Yi Chen starts to follow them, but Zhu stops him and asks where he is going. Zhu calls Yi Chen's puppy to follow the girls to the restroom, but Yi Chen tells Zhu to move. Meanwhile, Zhu's friend calls Yi a freak because he gets misunderstood as someone else, and he doesn't even have the nerve to come clean. Suddenly, they hear a scream, and Yi Chen realizes it's of Dong Lingxiu. On the other hand, some guys stop Lingxiu and her friend's way, and when the girls ask what they want, those guys ask them why they are so nervous. One of those guys is Chairman Wang, who says their brother Hai here just wanted to get to know them, so they better take the hint. The girls warn those guys not to try anything funny because they also have guys with them. But Wang says they don't care if the girls are with the guys because he is the boss there, and if he doesn't give any permission, then none of them can leave this place today. Suddenly, Ling Xiu warns Wang to make another move, and that she'll call her friends, but Wang immediately snatches her phone and orders his men to bring these girls with them. They grab Ling Xiu and her friend, but when Ling Xiu shouts for help, Hai puts his hand in her mouth. Suddenly, they hear a voice saying that they are shameless men for going against a lady, and when they look behind them, it's Yi Chen standing there. When Hai asks who Yi Chen is, Yi replies technically, he is their great-great-grandfather, and in the blink of an eye, he slams two of the guys who are holding Ling Xiu and her friend down. Yi Chen asks Ling Xiu if she is okay, but she is surprised to see Yi Chen there. Wang yells how dare Yi Chen interrupt Brother Hai's business and warns that Yi won't walk out of there alive. Hai calls his men to come to the restroom, and Ling Xiu thanks Yi Chen for helping her, but she says there are too many people. Yi Chen tells Ling Xiu not to worry because he promised Auntie Zhang to take care of Ling Xiu, so he says nothing is going to happen to her. Meanwhile, the guards arrive there, and Wang says Yi Chen is good at fighting, so he asks if Yi Chen wants to try more. Yi Chen replies it doesn't matter how many people they have and warns them not to even think of touching Ling Xiu. Suddenly, Hai asks Yi if he knows who he is and warns him to think of a way to die before irritating him. But Yi Chen grabs Hai's wrist and asks him if this is the hand from which he wants to touch Ling Xiu. Yi Chen tells Hai to say goodbye to his hand and immediately breaks his hand. Hai asks his men what they are looking at and orders them to kill Yi. As the guards rush to beat Yi Chen, Ling Xiu thinks there are too many people, and Yi Chen is in real danger, so she thinks she needs to find a way to get out of there and call the police. Meanwhile, Yi Chen beats the guards with a single attack, making the owner of that place wonder how this is possible because there are like 20 of the guards against one person, and he overpowered them. Meanwhile, Ling Xiu's friend shockingly asks if he was trained before, but Ling Xiu replies she doesn't know. Suddenly, when Hai asks who Yi Chen is, Yi immediately grabs his neck and asks if he still has no idea. Meanwhile, Zhu arrives here and shockingly asks Ling Xiu what is happening there, but Wang tells Zhu Xiaoming to look at the mess that the people he brought did. Zhu asks what Yi Chen is doing and tells him to let go of brother Hai, but Yi Chen asks if Zhu won't get a grip on what is actually happening. Zhu knows there is no need to ask because anyone could tell what just happened. Chairman Wang asks what Zhu is looking at and tells him to have Yi let go of Brother Hai. Zhu can't just get on Chairman Wang's bad side, so he tells Wang and Hai to not get mad because Yi is his classmate's hometown neighbor. Zhu says Ling Xiu is from a small town and he has never really been out before, so he requests them to forgive Yi and he'll have Yi apologize to them right away. Zhu never thought Yi Chen was so good at fighting, but he tells Yi there must be some sort of misunderstanding, so he should let go of Hai. Simultaneously, Hai furiously asks who Yi Chen thinks he is and asks if he thinks he deserves his forgiveness, but suddenly, Yi Chen slaps Hai and asks if he tells him to speak. Yi Chen asks Hai to give a proper explanation or he'll rip him open, but Zhu stops Yi Chen and asks if he doesn't think he has gone overboard. Zhu tells Yi Chen that Hai is brother who's trusted partner and asks if he doesn't know that who has a thousand men under him. Suddenly, more of Hai's men arrive there and ask who dares to bark at their place, but Zhu worryingly tells Yi Chen that he has gotten them in big trouble. 
Zhu says he is not getting involved in this, and Yi should settle this himself and tells Wang that he can't talk sense into Yi, so he has no correlation to this matter anymore. When Zhu asks if Wang could let him leave, Wang furiously says no one is leaving this place. Meanwhile, Ling Xiu tells Yi that she should just stay because if not, none of them could walk out of there, but Yi tells Ling Xiu not to worry because nothing will happen to her. Yi Chen, while choking high, tells him to let others leave because whoever gets in his way, he'll send them to see the Lord of the Underworld. Hai orders his men to let them go, so Wang tells his men to let them leave, and Zhu immediately leaves with his friends. Ling Xu's friend tells her to leave, but Ling Sui doesn't want to leave Yi Chen behind. Still, Yi Chen tells Ling Xu to go ahead and he'll leave later, but Ling Xu refuses to do so. Suddenly, Yi Chen leaves Hai, but Hai says Yi Chen has his respect now and asks how Yi Chen would like to die. Yi Chen says that as Zhu Xiaoming said that their boss is brother Hu, Yi asks if it is Quan Hu. Hai is happy that Yi has heard of his brother's name and asks if Yi is scared, but Yi replies it's a coincidence because he knows Quan Hu himself. Yi Chen says he'll make a phone call, and they'll see if they are the same people. Wang yells at who Yi Chen is to know about brother Hu and asks if Yi Chen is trying to get help. Suddenly, Yi Chen calls Hu and Hu asks if he has any orders for him, but Yi says he doesn't have any orders, and it's just that there is a dude called Zhao Hai who wants he dead, but apparently, he is under Hu. Hu yells who gave Hai the nerve to do so, and tells Yi Chen to let him have a word with Hai, so Yi Chen turns the phone on speaker. Hu yells at Hai to stop messing around because Mr. Yi is not someone he can provoke and asks Hai where he is now. Hai worriedly replies that he is in the Rome dynasty, so Hu tells him to stay there and that he is coming. Meanwhile, Wang is worried that Yi really knows Hu, and Hai wonders if it could be that Hu took in new people. Suddenly, Hai says Yi Chen should have told earlier that he is their new brother and says he and Hu go way back, so no matter how Yi put it, he still has to call him brother Hai. Hai says he'll let go whatever happened, but Yi better give a good apology, but Yi Chen replies if that is so then he'll play the game with Hai. After some while, Hu comes running and is exhausted, but he apologizes for being late. Hu gets shocked to see the scene where everyone is lying injured on the floor, while Hai and Wang are sitting terrified in front of Yi Chen. After seeing Hu, Wang and Hai start begging Hu to save them, but Hu asks Yi what they did do, to which he replies that he has a relative which he respects very much, and they had him take care of their daughter, but someone is thinking of tainting her and even said they wanted him dead. Yi asks Quan Hu to tell him how he should punish that person, but suddenly Wang accepts that it's his fault and begs for forgiveness. Wang says he has been there with Hu since he was in his twenties, so Hu can't leave him there, and he should save him. Hu embarrassingly tries to request Yi, but Yi tells him to take his time, gives Hu one night, and hopes by tomorrow morning, Hu will be telling him that they are dead or Hu will die. Hu says okay to Yi and realizes that Hai and Wang are dead meat now. As Yi Chen goes out, Ling Xiu immediately runs towards him and asks if he is okay, to which Yi Chen replies he is fine, but he says he tells her to leave first and ask where her other classmates are. Ling Xu feels bad because she remembers Zhu saying she is the one who caused all this, and now she is playing the victim card. A few minutes ago, Ling Xu told Zhu that it was fine if he was unwilling to help, but why would he blame someone else but? Zhu asked if he said anything wrong because not just her who made a great mess, but also her neighbor was a huge dumb too. Zhu said he was almost done comforting boss Wang and brother Hai's anger but Yi gave brother Hai another slap. When Zhu said who the hell Yi thought he was and he deserved to die in there, Ling Xu slapped Zhu while saying she was wrong about him and told him to get lost if he didn't want to help. Zhu left, saying that she could die too with that dumb if she stayed there. At that time, Ling Xu's friend also suggested there was no point in staying there anymore, but Ling Xu said she couldn't leave because Yi Chen had saved her, so she had to stay there and wait for him. Back to the present, Ling Xu tells Yi Chen that her friends left because they had things to do. Yi Chen says it's okay, and he decides to send her home, 
but Ling Sui shockingly asks if everything is settled and what happened to Hai, to which Yi Chen replies it's done, and they no longer trouble her. Ling Xiu is shocked that Yi managed to settle someone who made Zhu Ziaming so afraid. She remembers she has seen Yi hang out with all those gangsters, so she wonders if it could be that Yi is a part of it too. Ling Xiu thinks he might be a part of it, but he saves her, and when they reach home, Zhang thanks Yi for taking Ling Xiu home. Yi tells her aunt that she is too polite, but Zhang replies they are a family, so there is no need to be formal. Uncle Di Hang says they still have to thank him because Yi tutored her homework and accompanied her when she went out. Uncle Deng says it must have been tiring for Yi, so he says he'll buy him food next time. As it's too late, Yi Chen decides to get going and Zhang tells him to be careful on his way back. On the other hand, Hu calls Yi to inform him about the punishment, and informs him that Hai is dead and Wang has lost one of his arms and legs. Yi Chen tells Hu to look after his underlings next time and not have them barking around, to which Hu replies that Yi doesn't need to worry because he'll make sure his underlings have been taught a lesson. After the call, Hu tells Wang that he told them on the phone not to do something stupid, but they still went ahead and provoked Mr. Yi, who says Wang is lucky that he is still alive because if Yi us really enraged, who is afraid he also would have died here. Wang replies he won't do it again because he knows his mistake, and who tells Wang to have some time and think because if there is a next time, Wang will have to apologize for his life. However, Wang thinks the rest of his life is done, and so will Yi Chen's. On the other hand, while going home, Yi Chen remembers when he was tutoring Ling Xiu. He heard Aunt Chang mention money, so he decides he really needs to think of a way to earn money now. Suddenly, Yi calls Dr. Chen because he might help him and asks if there are any patients with intractable diseases in Zhang Nan, because as long as they are willing to pay, he can cure their sickness. Dr. Chen asks if Yi Chen is in need of money and if he can send it to him right away, but Yi says if he needs Dr. Chen's money, he'll tell him. The doctor apologizes that he has gone too far, but says there is a guy who is quite a big character in the mafia world, but something happened half a month ago, and he is severely injured. That man tried every hospital and doctor he could find, but nothing worked, so Yi Chen asked the doctor to give him more details. After some while, Yi Chen reaches his villa in a taxi, but Yuxi and Yuan also arrive behind that taxi, and Yuan recognizes Yi Chen when he gets out of the taxi. Yuxi says it's late, and seeing Yi Chen take a cab there, she wonders if he is trying to bother her. Suddenly, they get close to Yi, and Yuxi asks him why he is there because she thinks he has been bothering her when they were in the company, and now he has taken a cab there to follow her. Yuxi tauntingly asks if he has spent all the money the Chu family gave him and says this is not the community that he could just enter or could possibly even afford a day living in the worst villa there. Suddenly, Yuxi tells Yi Chen to see the Porsche she is in and tells him that it's a gift from her hubby Yuan Hao, but Yi shows her the key to his villa while telling her that he actually lives there. Yuxi says he cannot fool her with just a random card and, while showing him a card, tells him that this is the keycard of the villa in the oversleeping Dragon Mountain. Yuxi mocks him, saying that he cannot do a better job at faking it, but on the other hand, Yuan is shocked to see Yi's golden keycard. Meanwhile, he tells Yuxi to ask Yuan why their keycards look different, and she'll know the answer. When Yuxi asks Yuan if it's possible that Yi Chen's card is not fake, Yuan replies there is a total of 88 villas in a ver-sleeping dragon mountain, and each card is different. Yuan says the one he has on hand is the keycard of villa number 88, and the one on Yi Chen's hand is gold, which only belongs to villa number 1. Yuxi shockingly asks if Yuan is kidding because she knows only the ones with the most power are qualified to live in the ever-sleeping dragon mountain. Even though villa number 88 is under Yuan, it was brought three times the price than it should have been under the help of his father pulling some strings. Yuxi can't believe how Yi Chen could be sleeping in the most expensive and luxurious villa number one. Suddenly, Yuxi remembers that the villa is the property of the Chu family, so she thinks it must be them lending Yi that place as a way to thank Yi. Yuan also thinks that must be the case, and Yuxi says there is no way that Yi has the ability to do so by relying on himself. 
Suddenly, Yuxi accidentally steps on race and hits a tree, while Yi Chen thinks there is still time, so he'll keep them around for some fun. Two days later, Dr. Chen arrives to pick up Yi in the morning, and while Ning is telling him goodbye, Yi Chen has a frustrated expression because it's been days since that incident happened, and he wonders when she'll go back to her own house. Meanwhile, Dr. Chen says he is there to pick Yi up to meet the patient he mentioned a couple of days ago. But as Yi says okay, suddenly, the vice leader of the rank B mercenary team of the mercenary alliance, Zhao Qingdai, arrives with some men and tells Yi to wait and ask if he is Mr. Yi. Zhao tells Yi Chen that they are from the rank B team of the mercenary alliance and there is something they need to inquire about, so she hopes he can cooperate with their investigation. Meanwhile, Chen is worried about seeing Zhao, and when he asks if the doctor knows her, Dr. Chen replies that the Mercenary Alliance is a private organization made up of a bunch of trained mercenaries who help anyone resolve practically anything as long as that person has money. Dr. Chen tells Yi that the force of the Mercenary Alliance has grown so much in recent years that it even caught the attention of the higher-ups, and they intend to recruit them, so they gave the Mercenary Alliance a lot of missions. Dr. Chen says rumor has it that for anything that the higher-ups could not resolve directly, mercenary alliances are the ones doing them in secret. Suddenly, when he asks what they need from him, Zhao says there has been an awful case of serial kidnapping and murder happening recently, and the victims are very young boys. Zhao says their source tells them that he has something to do with this case, so she hopes he can cooperate with them. But Yi asks her where this source came from, and if she suspects that he is a murderer. Similarly, Dr. Chen calls them ridiculous, asks if they know who Yi is, and yells they are suspecting Yi out of nowhere. Suddenly, Zhao tries to grab Yi while saying that, murderer or not, Yi is still required to go with them. But Yi immediately grabs her wrist and, by turning her arm, says she is not qualified enough to interrogate him. Meanwhile, Zhao's men try to save her, but she tells them to stop and tells Yi that there is no point in grabbing her because if he is innocent, then he has more reasons to go with them and make it clear. Zhao says even if they leave, they'll still come back another time and warns Yi that it won't be as soft as this time, but Yi dares her to try it. Chen Pingji tells Zhao that he is Dr. Chen. There must be a misunderstanding, and he says he is sure she has records in her alliance. Chen Pingzhe gives his word of honor that Yi is not the murderer and asks if there could be a mistake in her source. When Zhao gets to know Chen Pingzhe is Dr. Chen, who is the master of traditional Chinese medicine doctors in the medical world, and he is willing to give his word for Yi, Zhao gets confused. Suddenly, Chen Pingzhe says if she doesn't believe him, he can give a call to the head of Chu's family, Chu Tianhong, because Chen is sure Chu Tianhong would have done the same thing for Yi. Zhao is shocked that both Chen and the head of the Chu family are willing to help Yi, so she gets worried that what on earth is Yi's identity. Suddenly, Zhou tells Xiao Lai to find her a laptop and bring her the video, which she wants to show to Yi because her source provided it to her, but she asks if T can let go of her arm first. Yi immediately leaves her arm while telling her to only lay her finger on him when she gets her facts right. Yi warns that if she does it again, he'll break her arm, but Zhao realizes Yi is very strong. Simultaneously, Chen Pingji tries to calm Yi down, and Zhao thinks Yi is young but very skilled, so even Dr. Chen is polite to him. Still, Zhao thinks whether or not Yi Chen is involved in this case, it's better to investigate him a little. After some while, when the laptop arrives, Zhao tells Yi and the doctor to take a look at the footage where she shows them a place where the kid was last seen. Zhao says the footage showed that it was Yi who brought the kid away, but Yi Chen says there is a problem with that video because four days ago at this hour, he was at the Moon Palace participating in the Chu family's banquet. Dr. Chen Pingzhi says he was there too, he can testify, and so can all the people who are at the banquet. Suddenly, Zhao asks Chen Pingzhe if he can provide her with a guest list for the banquet because they need to investigate. Chen Pingzhe says he'll contact the Chu family and Zhao requests Yi Chen to cooperate with them for a bit more. Zhao says that until they finish their investigation and ensure that everything is alright, then he'll be free to leave, to which he agrees, 
After some time, Zhao apologizes to Yi and says that after investigation, it's clear that Yi was at the Moon Palace during that time, so he is innocent. Zhao says it seems like there is something up with their source, so they'll go back. But Yi Chen asks if they can tell him the name of the person who provided them the video, to which Zhao replies that it's not suitable. Yi Chen says the person who gave Zhao the video wanted to frame him, and he just wanted to know who that person is, so Yi says it should be reasonable. Yi says they gave Zhao fake information on purpose, so he assumes that there won't be any trust between Zhao and that person to work with again. Zhao realizes Yi does have a point, so she agrees to tell, but suddenly Zhao's team member tells her that the body of the fifth missing boy has been found around the area of the South City, and there is no other clue other than a talisman that is left at the crime scene. Zhao is frustrated because every time they think they could make it, it always ends up like this. Suddenly, Zhao gives the name and information of the person he wants to know about on paper and leaves, saying there is a case they need to take care of so they'll stop occupying his time. After reading the name of that person, Yi gets furious and tells Chen Pingzhai to tell that patient that they'll meet tomorrow because he has something to attend to for now. On the other hand, Wang, while talking to someone on the phone, asked what was wrong because he thought there wouldn't be any problem with the video. Wang asks the other person how did Mercenary Alliance manage to find out that it was a fake video so quickly. Wang gets furious because now that he didn't manage to get back at Yi Chen, he has lost the trust of the Mercenary Alliance too. Wang thinks he has to find another way to take care of Yi Chen, and thinks he has to act quickly though. If he realizes this, then he'll come and seek revenge. Suddenly, when Wang hears a voice from behind that he is correct, he immediately looks behind and gets worried to see it's Yi Chen. Yi Chen says he'll end things once and for all and as Wang begs for mercy, Yi Chen finishes him. The next day, Yi Chen goes to visit the underground leader of Zhang Nan, Jiao Lei, and Chen Pingzhai introduces Yi as the expert to Lei. When Lei says Yi looks really young, Lei's right hand says it's ridiculous because Yi is a 20 years old boy, and even if he started learning young, Yi is at most a novice, so how can he call himself an expert? The old man says he is afraid that Yi might be fooling around, but Chen Pingzhai tells them that Yi's extraordinary skill has saved the daughter of the Chu family, and that is a known fact. Chen feels bad that Lei and his men are throwing dirt on Yi, but that old man says it's Chen Pingzhai who is useless for being incapable of curing Miss Chu Bingyu. The older man says if he were to arrive at Zhang Nan a few days early, he believes that Chen Pingzhai would not be standing there, which infuriates Chen Pingzhai. Suddenly, Yi Chen asks if he can know who the old man is, to which the man replies he is the 96th generation inheritor of Gui Gu medic Du Ren. After knowing this, Yi Chen says Du Ren is not in the place to judge him on whether Yi has the skills or not because he knows Du Ren is bluffing. Du Ren furiously yells that it is ridiculous because he has a set of acupuncture abilities that could save people from the hands of King Yama. Du Ren yells that Mr. Jiao Lei has seen him in action these days, so ye should not think of starting nonsense. Suddenly, Du Ren tells Jiao Lei that he has relieved Lei's injury in the last two days, so he says another acupuncture in, and Lei's injury will be gone entirely. Du Ren tells Lei not to let the two get in the way, but Chen Pingzhai says he really wants to cure Mr. Lei's sickness, and that is why he brought Yi, so he requests Lei to trust him. Suddenly, Lei tells everyone to quiet down and tells Chen that he won't give any comments on expert Yi's skill yet, but Du's acupuncture really did have an obvious effect on his hidden injury, so he really doesn't want to let everything go to waste. Meanwhile, Yi says he respects the patient's opinion, but Mr. Jiao Lei should have expert Du stay over for a few days in order to thank him, to which Jiao Lei replies that Yi really has a point. Jiao Lei tells Du that he should stay around for a few days and enjoy the scenery of Zhang Nan while looking over how Lei's body recovers. Du immediately says there is no need for that because he has already gotten used to traveling around and says there is still another patient in Qi Jai waiting for him, but Jiao Lei says Du is rejecting his kindness right now or asks if he should assume that Du is lying to him. When Du nervously asks Mr. Lei how he could lie to him, Jiao Lei tells him to sleep in the room next to him tonight. 
Du worriedly agrees to stay, but he, while closing the window, says there can't be any wind while he is performing the acupuncture, so he says it's better to close it, but he immediately jumps out of the window. When Chen Pingzhe asks Yu why Du is so eager to leave, Yi replies Du is guilty, and Lei also says Du is indeed suspicious, so he thanks Yi for the reminder. Yi replies there is no need to thank him, and when he gets going, Lei asks Yi where he is going. Chen Pingzhe tells Lei that Yi is someone whom even old Master Chu would need an appointment to see, yet Lei would believe a grifter than him, so Chen Pingzhe says it's better that Lei looks for someone else. Suddenly, Lei says it's all his fault and he has been blinded and deceived, so he apologizes. Lei says if he is willing to cure him, he'll pay five times more, which is five million, than his normal fee. Yi Chen immediately turns back while thinking Aunt Zhang needs money, so there is no way he'll let go of this chance to make money. Yi Chen says he'll give Lei another chance because of his sincerity, but for the consultation fees it'll be, like Lei has mentioned, 5 million. As Lei agrees, Yi Chen says Lei is a martial artist, and the injury on his body is caused by another martial artist, a dire energy caused by another martial artist. When Lei shockingly asks how Yi knows because he never mentioned anything to Yi, Yi Chen replies he could see it, so Lei apologizes for being blunt and calls Yi a genius. Lei says his injury was caused by a dark energy martial artist, and that is why he wasn't able to recover after a long time, and it even got worse. Yi Chen says it's normal, and Lei is a light energy cultivator, so it's only natural that he won't be able to heal it by himself. Lei says there is something he doesn't get, so he asks Yi why do Ren's tribulation acupuncture is able to ease the pain. Yi Chen says what Du is performing is some small gimmick that'll temporarily numb Lei's pain system so that it looks like it is actually effective. Yi Chen says if Lei lets Du perform that one more time, his pain will rebound tomorrow and he'll die within seven days. Lei understands that's why Du is so eager to leave, so he immediately tells his guards to catch Du Ren and says Du won't walk out of this mansion alive for fooling him. Lei says Yi is able to see through his condition, so that must mean Yi has a way to cure him. Lei requests Yi to help him, and Yi tells him not to worry because he has already accepted the fee, so he'll do so. Suddenly, Yi attacks Lei, making Lei ask what Yi is doing, and Lei says if he has offended Yi in any way, he could have just told him. Suddenly, Lei gets shocked because he can't feel any dark energy in his body and asks Yi if it is cured, but Yi smiles at him. Lei can't believe Yi shattered the dark energy inside him, and Chen Pingzhi says Yi is a miracle worker. Lei says Yi is very good, which he respects, and he thinks he might seem weak, but he had him flying with a kick and easily cured the dark energy that was in him. Meanwhile, Lei's man arrives and tells him that brother who is there to visit, which makes he wonder if they are talking about Quan Hu. Simultaneously, Hu comes in, saying he is there to see Lei because he heard Lei is recovering. Hu is shocked to see Yi and asks why he is there, but Lei asks if Hu knows Yi, to which Hu replies he got into some trouble with Yi, but Yi was very kind and didn't give him a hard time. Lei asks Hu why he didn't introduce Yi to him earlier because he would have died from this pain if it was not for the help of Mr. Yi. Who is shocked to know Yi cured Lei and tells Lei that Yi is the martial artist that he mentioned before. He is the one who gave Hu the scar on his neck. Who immediately bowed to thank Yi for saying Lei and called Yi his savior because he saved Hu's master Lei. Yi Chen says Hu is a grateful person and says it's alright, but suddenly Lei asks if he could be a dark energy martial artist, to which he replies he is not, but is almost. Lei and Hu are shocked to hear that Yi is a half-dark energy martial artist. Lei thinks Yi is around the age of 20, but he has already cultivated half-dark energy, so he'll eventually be a dark energy martial artist, or he might even break through and become the one and only master. Suddenly, Lei says there is a request that he wishes Yi Chen could fulfill, and Yi immediately asks if Lei wants him to finish the dark energy martial artist who harmed Lei, to which Lei replies Yi is right. Lei says during the time he was fighting for Zhang Nan's underground, he defeated another leader that was in the society who escaped to Dongying and returned only last month. 
Lei says that Guy managed to cultivate peak light energy and also brought back a couple of people from Dongying. One of them is a dark energy realm swordsman and Lei was injured by that Dongying swordsman. Lei says he has already invited some masters from the Dong Lai Martial Club in Zhongnan City to defeat that Dongying swordsman, but in case of anything, he wishes to invite Yi Chen to help. Lei says whether Yi Chen will be fighting or not, he'll pay him 10,000, and Yi says if it is just to help, then he won't mind. When Yi asks when it will be, Lei replies it's the day after tomorrow, and that he'll inform Yi about the time soon. Who immediately thanks Yi, but Yi says they are welcome, and he decides to take his leave. Before leaving, Yi says they can bill the consultation fees to his aunt's bank account and says as Quan who has a bank account, he should do it under his name. He tells Aunt Zhang that it's compensation for scaring her. The next day, Bingyu arrives to pick up Yi because her grandfather is waiting for Yi at the house, but simultaneously, Ning is watching them from the window and what Chu Bingyu has to do with Yi Chen. Ning can't ask Yi right away because she is just an annoying guest to him for now, and the time has not yet come. After some while, Bingyu arrives home with Yi and takes him to her grandfather. After seeing Yi, Chu Tianhong says he leaves all his sickness to Yi, but suddenly, a man arrives there running and says he has been taking care of old master Chu's sickness for half a year now, so he asks why there is someone else here all of a sudden. Old Master Chu tells Yi that this guy is Zheng Bochai, the disciple of the nation's medical expert, Chen Guangbai. Old Master says if it had not been for Zheng looking over him these months, he is afraid that his body condition could have been worse. He also feels Zheng is not like Du Ren and that he is actually something. Meanwhile, Zheng, feeling offended, asks Old Master Chu why he would have another over when Zheng is looking after him well. Zheng asks if Old Master Chu is losing faith in his ability and that he has another person to humiliate him, but Old Master Chu replies that is not the case. Suddenly, he says Zheng's skills are pretty good considering that he is able to stabilize Old Master Chu's condition under this condition, but visions are more important than skills. Zheng furiously asks what he means and if he is saying that he has no vision. Zheng says he started to learn beside his master when he was 10 and has seen way more conditions than Yi ever did, so he asks how dare Yi say that. Yi says Zheng has misunderstood and vision doesn't equal the sickness Zheng has seen but rather the things he has experienced. Yi Chen says the main reason old master Chu is unwell is not because of sickness but because it was an act of demonic creatures. Everyone is shocked to hear this, and Zhang asks what the hell Yi is talking about. Zhang says Yi could have just said that he is incapable, but instead, he made up all this bull crap, and Bingyu asks if he is tired and need to rest in the room. Yi replies Zhang doesn't know this because his vision is too narrow, and suddenly, by breaking the table there, Yi takes out some talismans while saying this world is much more interesting than they thought. Bingyu shockingly asks her grandfather what these are, and old master Chu asks Yi if they are talismans, to which Yi replies that these are not just normal talismans but enchanted talismans. Yi Chen tells them that normally enchanted talismans are used to cure sickness, stop catastrophe, summon god, repel ghosts and eliminate demons, but some people use them to harm others. Yi Chen, using one of those talismans, tells them it's a draining talisman, which is used to drain the life of every creature around it. Meanwhile, old master Chu remembers that his condition started to grow weaker after placing that table, and Chu Bingyu worriedly asks his grandfather who gifted that table and who would want to do that to him. Old master Chu says Jin Yu gifted him the table, but he says they have been friends for 50 years, so there is no way Jin Yu would do that. When Bingyu shockingly asks if Uncle Jin picked that table for her grandfather, Old Master Chu replies that he is right, and that Jin went to Zhongzu a year ago, where he brought this table. Old Master Chu can't believe Jin did this, so Bingyu asks Yi if it could be someone else who placed the talismans during the process because Uncle Jin is not only her grandfather's underling, but he is also a good friend of his grandfather, and they are really close. Bingyu says Uncle Jin is a well-known appraiser, and he has been helping Grandfather appraise many precious antics for 10 years. 
Bingyu says that Han stamp was also gifted to his grandfather by Uncle Jin, but suddenly Yi takes out that stamp and says if she is talking about this stamp, then Jin is more suspicious. Yi Chen says old Master Chu has had this stamp for five to six years, but he has never noticed that it has been counterfeit this entire time. Old Master Chu is shocked because he has given this stamp to many of his antic friends, and all of them say it's real after looking at and touching it. Yi Chen says it's because it was so surreal, and stamps in the Han Dynasty were made with a perfusion method, so it's easy to have air trapped inside of it, causing instability in the center. Yi Chen says therefore, there is a high chance that the stamp might be heavy on top and light at the bottom. But Old Master Chu's is too even, which exposed itself. Old Master Chu gets sad because he didn't mistreat Jin Yu in any way, so he is worried about why Jin would do that. When Old Master Chu asks if he has already noticed that this stamp is fake during the night when he is at the Moon Palace, Yi replies that it is true. But what he cares about is not the value of the stamp, but rather his sincerity, he keeps his silence. Old Master Chu thanks Yi for not exposing him, or else it would be a very awkward situation, and Bingyu also thanks Yi, but he says it's nothing. Suddenly, Zheng asks Yi about the use of the other talisman, to which Yi replies it's hard to explain, and it's better to show them, so he tells them to prepare themselves for it. Suddenly, Yi Chen releases the ghost hidden in that talisman, and everyone gets scared to see ghosts exist in their world. The ghost says now that they are released, all of them shall die, but suddenly, Yi Chen hits the ghost while asking if a mere ghost is trying to start something in front of him. The ghost asks how dare Yi hit him with the golden exercising mark and says he'll tear Yi into pieces. Yi Chen says that he'll burn the ghost down, and as he does it, Jin wonders who broke his spirit inhibitor talisman. Meanwhile, Yi Chen tells Chu Jianfeng and Bingyu that it's all right now, but suddenly, they all bow in front of Yi, and Chu Jianfeng says he is a fool, so he asks immortal Yi Chen to forgive him. Simultaneously, Zheng says he offended Yi Chen because of his own foolishness, so he also asks for forgiveness. Yi Chen replies they are pardoned, but he says he is not an actual immortal, so they should just call him Mr. Pai. Zheng says he must have made a fool out of his ignorance, and he hopes he can forgive him, so Yi Chen replies there is nothing to worry about because there are always ways to broaden Zheng's horizons as long as he is willing to learn and Zheng says he has learned his lesson. Yi Chen says the two enchanted talismans have been broken, and Chu Jai and Feng can have Zhong Buchai help him regulate his body, and he'll recover as time goes on. Chu Jai and Feng thanks Yi for saving his life and, while pushing Bing Yu forward, says there is something he would like to ask. Chu Jai and Feng sincerely hopes that Yi can take Bing Yu in as his disciple, and Yi thinks her talent is alright, but she is very kind. Yi thinks taking in disciples is all about fate, but since they are already there so he decides why not do this. Yi Chen agrees she can be her outer disciple first because cultivation is not only about talent, but how much effort they are willing to put into it, which is also vital since it depends on whether she wants this or not. Chu Jian Fong says it's great and tells Bing Yu to pour tea for Yi and respect him as his teacher. Bing Yu immediately serves him tea, and Yi tells her to call him her mentor from now on, and from today onwards, if anything happens to her, she has him behind her back. After this, Yi Chen tells Chu Jianfeng that he doesn't know how Jin knows how to write an enchanted talisman, but Yi is sure Jin must know of this, so he says Chu Jianfeng can meet Jin someday and try to get information. Chu Jianfeng replies there is a chance because Jin Yu knows that Chu Jianfeng likes antics, so every time there is an antic auction, Jin will come over to help him. Chu Jianfeng says there is an auction day after tomorrow, and he'll look into it then. Meanwhile, Bingyu says she hopes that Mentor Yi can go with Grandpa when he is at the auction to avoid any accidents. Yi Chen agrees, but he thinks he should have gone to one of these auctions earlier because if he's able to find good jade, then it'll be useful to cultivate weapons. After some while, Chu Bingyu gives her Mentor Yi a thank you gift and tells him that the materials Yi asked her father to get have already been prepared as well, and she had her people place them into the car. 
Yi Chen thanks her, and while saying he has something for her too, Yi points at her forehead, making her think that her master is an incredible cultivator. Before leaving, Yi replies that in the part of memory he has given her, there is a superior method of Kai refining. She has to work hard cultivating it and ask if she has any questions. Bing Yu replies she will and tells Yi to drive home safely. On the other hand Yi, while driving back home, takes out those talismans and says that now that these are in his hand, they should consider themselves lucky. After some while, Yi Chen reaches a garage with those talismans in his hand, but suddenly Zhao arrives behind him and at gunpoint tells him to raise his hands. Zhao asks Yi Chen why he is there, but Yi Chen asks her if the person there is the culprit in this case. Yi Chen understands the reason why there are talismans at the crime scene. Zhao says Yi is the prime suspect in this case, and now he is appearing at the crime scene, so she says she has reason to believe that Yi is the partner of the person inside. Yi Chen tells her that she is not their opponent, so he suggests she should not enter, but Zhao tells Zio Lai to bring Yi into the car. Zio grabs Yi's arm and tells him to follow him but Yi still warns Zhao to take his advice and not go inside. However, Zhao, while going inside, asks Yi if he thinks Zhao's employer sends money to employ a bunch of useless cowards. Zhao tells Yi to take his time, thinks of how to explain why he is there and runs inside. Yi Chen is worried, but Zio, while dragging Yi, tells him not to worry because they are a bunch of strictly trained professionals. Zio says as long as that murderer is inside, he'll get caught eventually, so Yi should worry about himself. Suddenly, they hear some gunshots, and when Zio worriedly asks if the person inside has a weapon, Yi immediately rushes inside. On the other hand, Zhao is inside the building with her employees, and when she asks where her Zio Liu is, suddenly, a body falls in front of her. Zhao is shocked to see it's Zio Liu, and he is severely injured, so she tells him to hang in there, but he tells her to leave because the culprit is not even human. Suddenly, a hand appears from the dark, and it pulls Zio Liu into the dark, which terrifies Zhao. Meanwhile, the hand again appears and beats down other members of Zhao's team, but she immediately takes out her gun and tells that prick to come out. When Zhao asks the culprit what the point of hiding in the dark and playing all these tricks is, suddenly, a man appears in front of her and asks if she is looking for him. Zhao immediately shoots at that man, but he dodges the bullets, grabs her neck, and asks if she really thinks she can catch him. The culprit tries to misbehave with Zhao, but suddenly, Yi Chen arrives there and attacks that guy. Yi immediately saves Zhao, and meanwhile, Zio Lai also arrives there, to whom Yi tells them that he should better bring Zhao and the other injured out of there. Meanwhile, the culprit gets up and, while changing its form, says it looks like Yi is the one who broke his spirit inhibitor talisman. The culprit says Yi does have something on him, but snooping into others' business could only lead Yi to death. The culprit tries to attack Yi, but Yi immediately cuts down his arm. The culprit is shocked that Yi is a light energy master, but Yi tells the culprit that if he is afraid now, then it's too late.